Dear listeners, if you feel lost with English, it's grammar or vocabulary, I'm here to help you. The After Class Report is a collection of recordings that will explain to you the most important aspects of the language. All episodes are content related. The inspiration comes from you, from our class. With the After Class Report, you will get answers to all the questions you want to ask. Money. Some say it is a very dirty subject and so... There is a saying that gentlemen shouldn't discuss money. Uh, well, I disagree because it is part of uh, the language and it can be English, Polish, French, uh, German, it doesn't matter. But we need to know how to talk about money, uh, money issues. And uh, the um, that's why today I have prepared this uh, presentation, this uh, recording uh, about money issues and about banking issues. Because uh, again, this is the idea of the after class reports. Uh, we want them to be very practical and uh, this is indeed a very practical subject because uh, you may find yourself in this situation where you will have to go to a uh, uh, well to a shop so that that's a certain thing but you will have to go to a bank you will want to get a loan you will want to open an account and you need to know how to talk about it you need at least these basic expressions how to discuss that so um that's why yes we we, we are going to go through different expressions connected strictly with uh, with money or with uh, banks and uh, something that we can start with is of course how we would like to pay or how we can pay or how we want to settle bills uh, because uh, there are i guess two most common ways of uh, settling the bills and it is in cash or by card by uh, credit card in the past there was this by check because you you got this traveler's checks. And I don't know if you remember anything like that. I have experienced that many, many years ago, uh, that uh, there was this visitor from Great Britain who came here to Poland with uh, checks. And uh, she didn't want to uh, take her card. Uh, well, somehow it was connected with the prejudices, right? That Poland was full of uh, white bears walking on on the streets. It was in the uh, 90s uh, uh, back then. Uh, but, but of course, you know, I think it was a very practical reason when it comes to a, uh, a teenager. Uh, her parents didn't want to give her like all the all the money. Uh, like in cash or they didn't want to give her all the money uh, that was there and uh, and use her card because they believe that if she loses her card she will lose everything if she loses her cash she will lose everything but with checks you know she could just uh, write a certain amount of money right and uh, withdraw the money in a bank from for, from a bank but I, I think it is not a very popular way of paying today that's my feeling and what is popular is in cash and by card. And of course, if you want to pay, you need to have a card. And if you need to have a card, you need to have a an account. And uh, when we go to a bank, we of course open these accounts and we've got uh, uh, two types of accounts because we've got the current account and this is for everyday spending. Mm, and we've got the savings account and uh, with the savings account, uh, we can set some money aside uh, for a rainy day. Mm, um, and uh, usually it is the same account, but you can just open the sub account and this is where you keep your um, uh, your savings. But on a regular basis, on a everyday basis, we use the current account. And if we want to pay in cash, we need to get this cash from somewhere. And we, we will get this cash from a cash machine or a cash point or a cash dispenser in American English that would be called an ATM. Uh, so this thing in the wall of a building where you go and uh, you insert your card and that's how you withdraw your money. And I use the word mm, hole on purpose because in informal English you can also call it a, uh, a hole in the wall. Uh, but of course, it's nothing standard, so I would encourage you to use this expression when you are traveling abroad. You would rather look for the cash points and cash cash machines. Mm, and once you withdraw money, you have it and then you can pay mm, uh, in cash. Coming back to banks, coming back to the accounts 
And it doesn't matter whether you have the current account or the savings account. Definitely, you need some kind of a bank statement. And in this bank statement, you will have all the information, what money comes in and what money goes uh, out from your account. And here comes a very, very interesting uh, thing uh, because it is connected with colors. I don't know if you have observed this, but uh, this is how the language, how the English language describes it. So you can either be in the red when it comes to your account and the money that you have, or you can be in the black. And in the red, means it means that you spend more than you have. And when you are in the black, it means that you spend less. So you still have some extra money uh, left. And uh, I wonder if you have observed that when you have a look at your bank statements. In the past, these bank statements were uh, printed and uh, sent to us. Now everything is, of course, online. So you just enter your account and you've got this history of your spending. Mm, and... Indeed, in some banks, not in every bank, but in some banks, these are exactly the colors. So if you pay for something, it is in the red. So you know that the money is out. The money is no longer in your account. And when you get some money, when somebody sends you the money, your customers, your um, employer, anyone, it is in the black, in the black color. So it means that you have more than you uh, than you spend. Of course, when we think about banks and when we think about money, we usually associate banks with uh, uh, something that's very natural, I mean, with the mortgage and with loans. Yeah, so maybe we associate that with loans and then we have this special type of a loan, that is the mortgage. Uh, loans have become something natural for us. Uh, we, we we have them, yes, we, we get the money in, in advance and then we have to pay them off, but Without that, we cannot function, we cannot buy houses, build houses, uh, buy, buy apartments and cars. And a very special type of a loan is a mortgage. And a mortgage is this kind of a loan you take because you want to buy a house or you want to uh, build um, a house. And of course, on every mortgage and on every loan, we have to pay installments. And installments, it's what we, what we pay every month, very unpleasant moment when when the time when the time comes and what is uh, very characteristic of installments it is uh, of course the interest rates right so um what we pay is of course not what we got from the bank but we have to give them more than we than we got uh, because of these uh, because of these uh, interests mm, let us leave banks a little bit uh, aside and let us talk about shopping and buying and paying for things. So this is uh, the more pleasant subject, I believe. And I'm sure there are uh, a lot of uh, people, a lot of you who know the famous phrase by Marilyn Monroe, who said that money, of course, doesn't bring happiness, but but it is the shopping that that does. And <laughs> there is something, of course, uh, to it. Because once we go to a shop, uh, be it online, be it offline, uh, we buy things. So it means that we purchase things. That's another word that can be used interchangeably. Not in all contexts, I would say, because purchase is a little bit more formal and purchase is associated a little bit more with this business English, with, with your office work, uh, with purchasing departments. Because when you purchase things, it is not only a bottle of milk or, or, or uh, bread, that you can buy every day but you would rather purchase like software like computers like cars like uh, uh, machines for the uh, company raw materials for the company mm, but but yeah it is it is the synonym to the word uh, buy and uh, we when we buy uh, we like to be given a discount. And then if you get a discount, you can say that you buy things at a discount, now, which means that uh, the, the basic price that you see is uh, the, something, but if you buy things at a discount, it means that you mm, can buy it a little bit cheaper and we like it, right? We like to get things that are uh, that are cheaper. Um, most of us, I believe, when we purchase items, when we buy items, uh, we buy just one thing, um, like one pair of shoes or, or one pair of uh, trousers. And not that we cannot buy more, of course, but there is this simple limit, right? So for an individual person, how many pairs of shoes can you wear? I know some people would say that there is this um, number that uh, that is that is endless, right? Because 
because you can wear whatever there is on the market. But um, the reason why I'm talking about it is to, to, to show you that for this individual shopping, it's rather buying a pair or, or two pairs. But for business, it is buying in bulk. And if you buy in bulk, it means that, uh, yeah, that you would possibly uh, get that from some wholesaler. Mm, and you would put it in your warehouse, yes? So it is not one pair. So if you buy in bulk, you are rather the seller, not the not the buyer, not the individual person, because then uh, you want to resell it, for instance, or you want to use it for production. In different cultures, uh, of course, there are different traditions of uh, paying and and paying for things and buying things. And those of you who have traveled to... Uh, African countries, like to to, to Egypt, uh, uh, maybe to Asian countries. I I've never been to Asian countries. I've been to uh, to Egypt, so I know that definitely they've got this tradition of haggling or bargaining. Um, uh, this uh, they they would even feel offended that if you go to some marketplace and you don't haggle and you don't bargain, that means that you don't negotiate the price. Uh, for us, uh, I think for for Polish consumers, it is natural just to. Uh, pay the, the the price that is there, right? You see a certain price and you pay for it. But uh, in in Egypt, for instance, it is uh, very uh, very natural to negotiate the price, and of course, the seller is satisfied to lower the price a little bit. And if you don't know it, don't don't do it. They they would feel uh, offended. I will repeat that once again. But I would like to work at the look at the word bargain because. Bargain is uh, is a verb, uh, which means to haggle, uh, but bargain is also a noun. And uh, this word, uh, I, I believe it's a pretty common word, but also this uh, word uh, causes uh, trouble because we somehow, when we translate that into Polish, we somehow know the, mm, the, the, the word, we, we know what it means, but somehow we don't know the exact relation between the item and why it can be called a bargain. So a bargain, of course, it means the special offer. It means that you get something at a discount. That you um, that that you you you. It is cheaper simply what you get, but not necessarily. It doesn't necessarily mean like a bargain is that something is cheap because you can still pay, I don't know, even fifty thousand uh, zlotys for something or ten thousand zlotys or one thousand zlotys. And it is still this bargain because bargain means that you pay relatively less for the quality that, that you get. So when we are talking about cars that, I don't know, cost 100,000 uh, uh, zlotes, this is the regular price. And then you get the same car for 70, uh, uh, 70, hundred, uh, for, 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 uh, yeah, for, for 70,000, I'm sorry, for 70,000 uh, zlotes, mm, uh, then definitely you, you, this is a bargain for you, right? So bargain doesn't mean that something is cheap. It, ju it just means that it is cheaper in comparison to what was the, uh, the first, uh, the first price. Mm, now, I would like to take you for a, well, for a trip a little bit, uh, because when we want to travel, we also need money and we also need to pay. Uh, and what we pay for when traveling, and it can be the plane, it can be the bus, it can be the taxi, it can be the train, we pay the fare. Fare is what you pay for transportation. So it is the bus fare, it is the plane fare, it is uh, the, the train fare. Mm, and fee, so there are these two words, fee and fare. They are, they both denote something you have to pay. Uh, but fare, let me repeat that, fare once again is for transportation. Fee is for this professional service. So a fee is something you would uh, pay for, for studying a language, for instance. So this is what you pay to teachers. This is what you pay to lawyers. Uh, this is what you pay for, this is what you pay to tax advisors. This is what you pay to um, uh, doctors. So anybody who in private is giving you this extra service, is giving you this uh, this uh, mm, uh, professional uh, help. I said in private, of course, it, it doesn't mean that it's secret, but in private meaning that they are not in hospitals like doctors, but they are just uh, inviting you to their um, to their office to uh, to their clinics after after hours, so uh, so to say. And when you pay for something, that can that can refer 
to, 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 to the fee, right? Or to, to the fare as well. And you pay for something and it is so much more expensive than you uh, than it should be. Of course, you feel stupid. <laughs> you, you feel bad. Um, you feel that you don't want to do it, but there is a special name for it and it can be referred to as a, as a rip-off. So a rip-off means that you paid way more than what you what you were supposed to pay for uh, for a given uh, given item. And uh, here uh, I would like to change the subject and I would like to move to the general subject of more like uh, governmental issues, so to say, or political issues. And I know that the hair stands on end here. Uh, but the reason why I say that they are these governmental things or, or somehow connected with these things or somehow connected with the government, with the working of the government, because we have to talk about tax. And tax is something that we all have to pay. And the tax that we hate most, I think, is the income tax. So this is the tax on what you earn. And the more you earn, the more tax you have to pay, unfortunately. Um, but there can be such situations that when you pay this tax, uh, so to say, in, a, in advance, at the end of the year, you will find, that, uh, find, find out that you will get the tax rebate, which means that they will give you the money back. And this is the nicest thing because... Uh, because we all like to get our money, uh, get our money back, um, and uh, of course, when it comes to these political issues and uh, the 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 things, the the money that we have to pay for the government, to the government. Um, it is uh, so rather to the government, right? Not for for the government, but to the government. Um, uh, sometimes the government wants to give us some money, and that usually happens to people who are unemployed and when they are unemployed they are on unemployment benefit this is a full name or we can call it also the dole so you are either on the unemployment benefit or you are on the dole uh, when you are a person that is invalid or disabled uh, which is a very uh, sad uh, thing you can also apply for any benefit from the government any allowance and that is indeed called the disability allowance um, so let me repeat, like the tax is something you would pay to the government, but uh, when when you want to get some money from the government, it's still possible. So you can get the, the unemployment benefit or dis the disability um, uh, allowance. And uh, the perfect, just to finish with the governmental political issues, the perfect thing is when there is the tax relief. And the tax relief means that you don't have to pay anything, right? Because uh, you are exempt from it. It's, it's free. Mm, and these are the situations possibly that we love the most. And the, the three last expressions that I put here in this uh, in these brackets, mm, uh, in this uh, bag of uh, words, uh, these are the expressions that we use in yeah, in everyday life, I believe, in private life, when we invite some pe some people somewhere or when we use the hospitality of somebody, because uh, if we are um, invited by the company usually um, and we can uh, have some, some lovely dinner or we can have some drinks, um, uh, this is what happens when there are these um, business meetings, uh, company meetings, uh, before Christmas, you know, be, uh, before uh, before New Year's uh, Eve, for instance, it means that it is on the house. When you don't have to pay for something, it is on the house. Sometimes it, it can happen. I think it, I have experienced something like that, that you can go, for instance, to a restaurant and uh, the chef will want to show you something what they have prepared and they will also tell you it's on the house and you have one meal free, for instance. Um, so we, we don't, we don't pay it. Uh, we, we don't pay for it. Um, another situation, but actually it just seems like we don't pay for something, but we will have to pay only, we will have to do it later on. It, uh, it, uh, it is described by, or with this expression on the book. And I, I don't know if any of you use it now. I know that it was popular in the 90s. And it was uh, popular in local shops, I would rather say, in some uh, grocery shops, uh, in, in some little supermarkets, local uh, local places where you could get just some some food, right? So it was the, the some drinks or rice cream. 
Mm, and if you didn't have the money, oftentimes it was, you know, kids who, who didn't have the money. They uh, went to the shop assistant, to the lady, and they bought without paying like uh, the ice cream and it was on the book. So the lady would write something in, in her uh, secret notebook and we were supposed to give this money back to her when we had it. Most often it was our parents who would have to go there and settle the bill. And the last, I think, a very nice expression um, is uh, when we invite our guests, we can invite them to restaurants we can invite them to some drink bars and we want to uh, we want them to feel uh, welcome and we want them to feel our hospitality so we say it's on me and when it, it means when you say something is on me it means that you will pay for it and you want your guests to feel very special so that's it that's it for today. That's it for this uh, recording. Uh, money issues, banking issues, um, taxes, benefits, a couple of really easy, useful expressions. But if you don't know them, uh, you will be a little bit at a loss. So with this recording, I hope you will now remember them. If you enjoy what you have listened to, please like the episode. You are invited to listen to my other podcast called World of English, in which I'm telling different stories so that you can relax and learn the language. 